Chapter three, all about the mole. The topics are just the mole concept in general, molar mass, percent composition, and empirical and molecular formulas. Does everybody remember this guy? Mole, mole, mole. Uh, the mole is just a count. So here's some counts you already know. Two of a kind is called a pair or a couple. <laughs> Six. <laughs> my, my former students know this one. Six pack, right, which is generally, generally six Cokes held together with plastic like that. But it can also be Brad Pitt. Or I, I had a thing going for Ryan Gosling for a while, but I got to tell you, I just saw Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and even though he's pretty old, he takes off his shirt at one point. He, look, he looks pretty fine still. Okay, so there's a six pack. What's 12 of a kind called? 13. Unlucky number, no. Baker's dozen. Supposedly they get rid of donuts, give you an extra donut at the end of the day. 24? Two dozen. I heard somebody say it. It's not two dozen, it has a word. No? It's called a case. Here in Singapore, they call it a flat. In the US, they call 24 Coke cans in a little box a case, or beer cans is more typical. Uh, here they call it a flat because it, it's literally a flat rectangle of Cokes. 144? Has a name, not a dozen dozen. No, do you know what it is? Did you say anything? It's a gross. It's a gross. So if your parents are in the shipping industry, this is a word they may use. How about 500? I have one right here. No, this also has a name. It's called a ream. A ream of paper. So these are like measure words in Chinese, right? Okay, there's another count 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of anything number. it is Avogadro's number but the name of the word that is this number of things is the mole here comes the mole so oh come on geez like that so it's nothing mysterious it's nothing weird a lot of people get freaked out about it it's just a count so just think it's like a dozen but it's a whole lot of things it's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd there's an actual definition no you will never have to repeat that Yes, it is called Avogadro's number, named in honor of this guy, he with the long nose. He has a, we actually have an, a lab where we very elegantly try to approximate Avogadro's number, <clears throat> sort of like the way he would have to, because obviously he didn't have phones, calculators, he only had a slide rule. It is the amount of a substance that contains that many particles, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, of any representative particle. So what might be a particle in chemistry? That could be an atom a molecule, which is a collection of atoms bound together into a compound, or formula units. Formula units are the base unit of ionic compounds. Our go-to ionic compound is sodium chloride. We don't say a molecule. It's a formula unit. The reason is this is ionically bound together versus a molecule, which is covalently bound. Uh, one of our go-to ionic, or sorry, covalent compounds is hydrogen gas or sugar, glucose. Both of these uh, are called, a base unit of these are called the molecule, and that's because they share electrons or covalently bound. So formula unit is the base unit of ionic compounds, molecules for covalently bound, or just a simple atom like neon or argon or um, in the group A, he helium, for example, or all the metals. Those are just atoms. So here's my go-to uh, molecule. No, it's nothing real. It's just something I show people a lot. Remember, we could also include atoms, just like metal atoms. So for, for the atoms, single atoms as representative particles, it could be metals. So if you just have a copper atom or silver or gold, whatever, it's just atoms. It's not Cu2, Ag, Ag3. It's not, not like that. It's just single atoms. Or it could be the uh, noble gases, such as helium, etc. Or it could be things like just carbon. So on the inside of these candles is some black stuff. This is soot. It's just carbon. So these are just carbon atoms, a lot of them. 
Uh, that's also what in your pencils, the graphite in pencils, is just a whole bunch of carbon atoms. So it could simply be carbon. Boron also is by itself. Okay, so we could have any number of just atoms. These are all what we call representative particles or just particles. And yeah, it's a whole lot of things. This number is too big, don't ever write it in decimal, just always write it in scientific notation. So it's just 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd things. On our AP equation sheet, it is up on the top right, and it's four sig fig, 6.022. And it just says 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd mol to the minus 1, so meaning something over moles. Moles is in the denominator. So what is that thing? It could be absolutely anything. It could be bricks. It could be hamburgers. It could be lots of jelly beans. It could be marshmallows, baseballs. It doesn't really matter. But what you got to know is that if you have one mole of cheeseburgers that contain two hamburgers, it's one mole of those double cheeseburgers. If you say how many meat patties are there on those double cheeseburgers? It's two times, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. It's two moles of hamburger patties. One mole of the hamburger made with two burgers. 10 moles of jelly beans, you just multiply it by 10. A half a mole, you just divide by two. Okay, so this, this count makes it really, this word mole makes it really easy to deal with huge numbers, which is what we deal with in chemistry. So one mole of sodium atoms. Sodium is a metal. It's in group one. It's really reactive. We have to store it under vegetable oil. It reacts so strongly with water. It contains, one mole contains 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. They, it's not Na2, it's just Na, sodium atoms. But so, something like nitrogen, which covalently bonds, a covalently bonded molecule, one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of N2. But if I ask you how many nitrogen atoms are there in one mole, it's obviously two moles, or 12.04 times 10 to the 23rd. Remember, that's not written in proper scientific notation. I just left it like that to emphasize that it's two moles of nitrogen atoms. So if you had, for example, make it out of silver. If you have a molecule like this, one of the homonuclear diatomics, one mole of these things, you have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of these things, but two moles of the atoms that make up the molecule. So, sodium chloride, there's one mole of sodium chloride means 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units, but that means we have, when it dissociates in water, we have one mole of sodium ions and one mole of chloride ions. And you might think, well, why would we ever need that? Because some properties in chemistry depend on the number of particles. So if this dissociates, if this compound dissociates into two particles, you don't just have one mole of particles. You have two moles of particles. And so the, for example, the freezing point depression is greater, or the boiling point elevation is greater. How big is it? Huge. This always boggles my mind. Rice grains, entire land uh, of the world to a depth of 75 meters. This boggles my mind. But that's more than has ever been grown, so it doesn't matter. We don't have that. A uh, cubic box, 200 kilometers on each side. 200, not meters, kilometers. So obviously bigger than Singapore. A mole of marshmallows, one of my favorite demos in chemistry. Uh, cover just the U.S. to a depth of 1,000 kilometers. A mole of unpopped popcorn, cover the entire continental U.S., nine miles. It's huge, right? It's a huge number. Yeah, that one. Will the Earth still be around? Who knows? Uh, 600, oh, sorry, 60 trillion body cells in a human body, and the entire population is more or less 7 billion. Then a little dimensional analysis. We have person and person canceling, so now we have body cells on Earth. That's still not even a mole. Now, of course, by the time I wrote this PowerPoint, it was probably fewer people. Maybe we're up to a mole of people. Uh, body cells, sorry, not people. <laughs> one mole of one cent coins divided up among the world's population. Uh, that would be pretty good. That would be a lot of money. Of course, we don't have a mole of coins, right? Yeah. Uh, spending occurred at one million per day. It would take each person 2,400 years to spend all of that money. So it's a huge amount. 
we're just going to say mole, though, instead of 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. These are um, all of the same thing. I slip once in a while and I call things molecular weight. Mostly I abbreviate MW, partly because those are my initials. So that's incorrect. It's not weight. It is mass. Weight is your mass times the acceleration of gravity down when you step on a bathroom scale in the morning or if you put a stack of bananas in a um, spring scale, you have the acceleration of gravity pulling it down. But the mass doesn't change when either when uh, gravity changes. Your mass is constant or something's mass is constant. So all of these words just mean molar mass, which is also abbreviated mm. It's just the mass of a mole of anything. So if you say the molar mass of this, you just need the grams per mole of this. And how would we find that? Well, we would have to look up the individual at atomic masses of everything that make up the molecule. That's just the mass of those, that number of particles. All right, moles. At the center of our world in chemistry, this is sometimes drawn as a heart. This is the so-called molar highway. This helps you understand where you are when you're working problems. For example, if I give you mass, the units are grams or milligrams. You need to get to moles. You use molar mass, and the units of molar mass are grams per mole. Okay, so pretty much when you read the average atomic mass off of our periodic chart, that's in grams per mole. So that's how much a mole of that substance weighs in grams. So if I give you mass and you need to get to moles, do we multiply by grams per mole or do we divide by? Well, that's why it's so nice to know about dimensional analysis because you know that you have to set it up. If I give you 10 grams of something, you have, oh, let's do sodium since I happen to know sodium's atomic mass. You have to decide, do I multiply by grams per mole? What unit would I get if I did this? Grams squared over mole, that ain't right. It's got to be grams per mole, one mole, and it's 20, about 23 with just two sig figs. And then when you do the dimensional analysis, grams canceled, and you're left with moles. So getting from mass to moles, you just divide by molar mass. Um, before we do the gas chapter, I'll just give you volume of gas at standard temperature and pressure. And that is 22.4 liters per mole. That number is up there, so you don't have to memorize it. It's up on this box. So we can use that dimensional factor to get from gas volume in liters or milliliters. Change it to liters first. Divide by this, and you'll get to mole standard temperature and pressure. <clears throat> for only gas kinetics is zero degrees Celsius uh, and pressure of one atmosphere, which is also up there. And uh, we'll do. PV equals NRT for non-standard conditions, but we'll do that when we get to that chapter. If I give you atoms or particles, representative particles, we just use Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles per mole. If I give you moles and I ask you to go to here, well, that's not very useful. It's just a, a quick test to see if you understand how this works. You would multi uh, multiply by it. Going the other way is more useful. This is the one we mostly do for solids because we weigh solids on a balance. We cannot count moles. There's no such thing as a molometer where you go one, two, three, four, finally get to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. We don't have that. Instead, we measure the, ma uh, the moles indirectly. We calculate moles based on the mass. This we measure on a balance and we get grams. These gas volume, we can measure in a device like a cylinder to measure the gas volume, something like this, like a syringe. Um, and particles, like I said, is not really useful in real life. It's just an exercise in academia to see if you can solve these problems. So this is our so-called molar highway. Um, when we add uh, molarity, which is moles per liter of a liquid, the volume of a liquid. So if I give you a liquid volume and you know it's molarity, then you can get to moles. So gas volume I give to you in liters. Liquid volume I give to you in liters or milliliters. And to get to moles, you either use the molarity or standard temperature and pressure, STP, gas constant, or PV equals NRT. So there's our molar highway. That's all you got to know for chemistry. Except now we have to know how to do those problems. So anytime you get bogged down, it was really helpful to change to moles and think about laying problems out so you can look at the units, analyze the units. That's what dimensional analysis means. Don't forget, you got to lay out all your problems with the proper setup. Uh, and I don't mind if you do it algebraically. I'm just going to tell you it's a little bit slower and a little bit more prone to error 
So this method is a little quicker by laying all your units out, the factors out. Uh, you must label things. Don't ever just leave an answer. Does anybody know what 10 divided by 23 is? Sorry? Okay, we'll just say 0.4. And it's supposed to be how many sig figs? Uh, two. Two in this one, so I'll just say 0 0.40. Don't just leave an answer like that. Don't forget proper sig figs, the units, and the labels, sodium atoms. And then if you would please box your answers, that will be helpful for me when it comes time to grade your test so I can do it a little more rapidly. So that's how you do all uh, sto uh, moles and stoic problems. So would you get out your calculators, please? Does everybody have a calculator? Okay, ready? First, we're going to change representative particles to moles. How many moles are represented by 1.33 times 10 to the 29th atoms of alum aluminum? Anybody got it? Raise your hand when you get it. A couple people have it? Three? Four? Okay. Some of you might still be turning your calculator on. I get it. You want to aspire to get that quick with these problems. Now, you didn't write anything down, and that's fine, because this was a pretty easy one. All we had to do, if we were to write it down to show me your work, is, and by the way, you have to show me your work even if you do it in your head on the test. You're communicating to me that you know that, that material. We started with what we were given, 1.33 times 10 to the 29 atoms. How many sig figs here? Three. Three. Everything before the times 10. Uh, we're going to use Avogadro's number to get two moles. When I give you representative particles, set it up so that atoms cancels, you're left with moles. Don't forget to check for sig figs. How many moles of sucrose are represented by 4.68 times 10 to the 8 molecules of sucrose? So I'm giving you molecules, a representative particle. We need to get to moles. Who's got the answer? Okay, may I ask, did you retype the whole thing or did you just change this to that? Well, just, I just, I kind of retyped the entire Okay, See, I was just curious if anybody edited that previous response. So, did everybody got the answer? 7.773 sig figs times 10 to the minus 16 moles of sucrose. Now we're going to go moles to representative particles. How many molecules of, what's the name of this, anybody know? Carbon. Tetrachloride is an industrial solvent. Are represented by 3.56 moles of carbon tetrachloride. Anybody got the answer? One, two. So what'd you do? You probably just did this in your head. 3.56 times 10 to the 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules, 2.14 times 10 to the 24th. Let's do some more going in moles to mass. So now we're going to be in the middle of the molar highway. We're going to go to mass. What is the molar mass of sucrose? Molar mass. So we need to know the moles, the, sorry, the mass of one whole mole of this. So everybody look up here a sec. Let me show you how this works. In sucrose, there, <coughs> excuse me, in the molecule of sucrose, there are 12 molecules of carbon. Each one, hey, you think, could you look up here a sec? Just want to make sure you, you remember how to do this. Each mole of carbon atoms in this one mole of, of sucrose molecule, each carbon weighs 12.0 grams per mole. Now, I realize your periodic chart, by the way, help me out here, 12.01. So this one is just three sig figs, but if you use this periodic chart, you'll have four. That means that in one mole of this sucrose molecule, 144 grams of the whole mass is due to carbon. So obviously that's going to depend on how heavy the atom is and how many of them there are. So for the next one, there's 22 of them, 22 hydrogens, but they only weigh about a gram. So the mass that's contributed to the molecule's total molar mass is only 22 grams. This one's much heavier. Now when we go to oxygen, there's almost as many oxygen as carbon, and it weighs a little more. 
So the contribution of oxygen's mass to the molecule's mass is 176. You sum that all up, and that's the total molar mass. Now, on a test, if I were to ask you, which is way below the scope of our class, if I were to ask you, show how you calculate the molar mass, then you have to lay all this out. On our tests, you do not. All you have to do is keep it in your memory of your calculator and write it down somewhere. In fact, you might not even be asked, what is the molar mass of this compound? That's too easy for our class. But write it down somewhere nonetheless. And even put a little mm equals 342.0 grams per mole. Why? Because in a future problem, you're probably going to need it. And two, you're communicating to me, oh, what happens if you write down 167? You've written this down wrong. And then all of the subsequent problems are done incorrectly. But you did them right. You just used an incorrect value. On the AP exam and in our class, that's called an error carried forward. And it does not count against you. So you miss a very small amount, sometimes not even anything, especially if it's just a transposition. You miss a very small amount for calculating molar mass wrong. And then when you carry it through the problems, they don't count against you. But you obviously see, I hope, that that means you've got to lay everything out so I can see that you incorrectly use the wrong value. You use the wrong value. So that would be, if you had a 167 here and this was wrong, subsequent problems, I would just write ECF, error carried forward, and you would get full credit for it. Was that your question, Jonathan? Uh, yeah, the yeah, yeah, it doesn't count against you. So what is the mass of a half a mole? You probably do that one in your head, right? Or you can lay it all out. Uh, one, two, three, four. Remember, we line these all up by decimal. Uh, since I only used one decimal place here, I have one decimal place. Then you count sig figs. There's four, so our answer is four. If we did it with our periodic charts, we'd have two decimals. So this answer oh, would still be three, because we have three sig figs here. So don't forget to check sig figs. What's missing here? Sucrose, the label. Let's do another one. Moles to mass. What is the mass of, oh, well, we just did that one, right? Mass to moles. How many moles are represented by 5.36 grams of silver nitrate? Now you need your periodic charts because you need the molar mass, well, uh, um, one mole of silver nitrate. And just kind of look up at me and raise your hand if you get it. We start with what's given. Uh, it's usually the easiest thing. Think of this as a fraction over 1, 3.56. You could just put G. You don't have to spell out grams. Silver nitrate, yes, use the chemical formula. We're going to need grams in the denominator. The next factor would be the molar mass, grams per mole. We calculate that. This is an example of you don't need to run that. You don't need to lay that all out on a test. You can just type, uh, sorry, you can just write in here 169.9. You don't have to put it somewhere grams per mole, because I know if you write the units that you know the molar mass, the correct molar mass of silver nitrate. Do the calculation, check sig figs, sig, three sig figs here, don't forget to put silver nitrate. Volume to moles to mass, so this is going to be gas volume, what is the mass of 3.67 liters of nitrogen? Don't forget it's a homonuclear diatomic, remember the, the mnemonic device, did we talk about this? The mnemonic device to help you remember which ones appear as homonuclear diatomics, meaning they appear with two, watch this, horses need oats for clear brown irises. You never have N by itself, F by itself, H by itself, O by itself. You always have them as diatomics. So if I ask you for, in English words, the mass of this many liters of nitrogen gas, don't forget it's N2. Anybody get it yet? STP, the gas constant, 22.4 liters per mole. A couple of you have it already. So 3.67 liters is what I gave you, three sig figs. There's 22.4 liters per mole at STP. The molar mass of nitrogen gas is not 14, it's 28. Real common mistake, you guys. <coughs> three sig figs, we should have N2 there. Okay? I know that was pretty fast. Should be a review for most everybody. So how about representative particles to moles to mass? This is just a, a teach thing. You'll, this is not like a real life thing. We never have any that many molecules. We, we have no way to count that. So we need the mass of 3.40 uh, times 10 to the 20 molecules of sucrose.
Oh, what would we have needed here? It's in your calculator somewhere, right? Chemical formula, right? And the molar mass. I don't remember what it was. 342? Okay, let's lay it out. <laughs> so what I gave you, molecules, molecules per mole, Avogadro's number. Don't forget to put it, set it up correctly. We divide by the number of molecules. And then the molar mass, 342 grams per mole. 0.193, there's three sig figs, three sig figs, they should say sucrose over there. So this was kind of fake, it was just for practice. This is what it normally looks like. This is like an old AP question. Juglone, a dye known for centuries. It's a natural herbicide, blah, blah, blah. Uh, here's the formula, we need that, gotta wake up when we read that. Calculate the molar mass. Now, this is called scaffolding. I'm telling you, hey, by the way, you need the molar mass in the next part of the question. Sometimes the questions are like that. Sometimes it's all rolled into the question. Maybe it won't make you stop and say, first calculate the molar mass. At the beginning, it'll probably say that. Later on in the year, you'll just do it by force of habit. So who's got the molar mass of juglone? Two. There it is. Do you have to write this all out? No. I'm just doing this for you so you know how to do it. And I did it with... Uh, the proper number of sig figs, yeah. Our periodic chart gives hydrogens to three decimal places, everything else to two. And then, uh, so when we line this up by the proper number of decimal places, we should have just one there. So the molar mass, 174.1. Yes, Jonathan? Are we supposed to, when we calculate this, are the molar mass of each of them supposed to be three significant figures or four? Uh, just use what's on your periodic chart, and then the data will give you the sig figs. So when you're calculating molar mass, it kind of doesn't matter because we could have better periodic charts that give us more significant figures. This one just happens to stop at three or four. This is the important part. Somebody measured the mass on a balance of pure juglone, 1.56 times 10 to the minus two. How many moles does this represent? Anybody have that answer already? Yeah? And then how many molecules? So this many grams, the molar mass divided by the molar mass gives us that many moles. And then how many molecules per mole? Just multiply by Avogadro's number. Three sig figs, three sig figs. That one is calculated with our periodic charts. So this is a more typical POD and test question. Okay, pretty easy, yeah? Yeah. So anytime you get stuck, keep calm, change the moles. Think molar highway. How do you get from one place to another? Um, the next thing we need to do is present comp. Why don't we take a little break right now?